Here is Mariola. And it's quick art talk time. Hello everyone, this is Mikhail Kuz. I'm here again, of course, with Darius Sobrotsky. We have been uh, very busy these uh, last weeks, uh, hence our absence. Um, there is a lot to do, a lot to handle during uh, these unexpected times to, you know, keep the school afloat, uh, damage control, all that. However, these are, of course, excuses. Uh, we will, of course, do our best to keep those videos running for you, for people that mm -hmm. want to have a glimpse of the school or cannot maybe afford, and just to stay in touch with everyone. Um, hi, Derek. Hi. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Um... Yeah, as you said, uh, things are really, uh, really, really hard lately. Um, but we are getting on a good track, I guess. Like the, the projects are coming. There is a lot of like people who are messaging us regarding the school. Uh, so even though we had to, uh, we had to move our uh, last term. We didn't really cancel that. We just moved that uh, onto uh, possibly uh, the fall term. So we're gonna merge it. Uh, we have a lot of. Um, questions and interest from people who who would love to come back and who would love to basically sign up and they also are tired of this situation and of course they are asking you know uh if there is a possibility to come to the school which yeah. we really hope it's gonna happen soon and we'll be of course uh sharing all of those infos publicly uh via our social but for now yeah we, we are focusing on bringing back Quick art talks. We are working on our uh, personal works as well. We are working on the new projects because um, you know um, the whole business side of concept art cannot be you know stagnant for that long. I guess. And, I hope um, not. I hope not. And I see that you know through my clients and how they react to that. And you know everyone is tired of that already. Even though the situation is very serious, we have to work, right? We have to sort of like act accordingly and hopefully and you know wishfully as long as we are healthy we can we can just uh you know keep that ball rolling i guess and exactly that's, that's what, what I, we want to do that's <clears throat> what i always kept on saying if you stay stay healthy stay safe you know keep that immune system boosted we will persevere in the end anyway today we will talk a little bit about our mutual class that uh, i run with uh, with Derek. Uh, which is digital painting. We run that class in two versions, right, Derek? We have the intro mm -hmm. to digital painting and advanced digital painting. Now, during the advanced digital painting, we cover a topic um, where we study old masters. And in today's painting that you see uh, is, a, is a live demo recording that, uh, that, that I did, uh, I think, last term or the term before. I don't know, I'm losing sense of time. But um, the point is that we are, <clears throat> we are trying to immerse ourselves in, in the shoes of, uh, of those old masters and the topics range. Like, even though I'm, I'm a mech guy, Derek is, you know, the, the environment guy, we really also challenge ourselves in class and, and mm -hmm. tackle all these subject matters, right? And, uh, just, you know, of course, it's nothing compared to what we cover at school, but I think it's, it's worth um, mentioning some important points, why we do it. Um, so why do study the old masters, right? This is here, uh, James Reynolds. It's also nice to know who he was. James Reynolds was, uh, uh, was, was an artist um, from California, and he has been announced or claimed, reclaimed to be one of the most, uh, one, <coughs> one of the best oil painters of uh, Western uh, landscapes. So he's famous with, uh, with, you know, just basically painting cowboys, as you can see here, on horses, beautiful landscapes with beautiful juicy lightings. Um, the way how he uh, just, you know, reinterprets uh, reality is, is, uh, is beautiful. Um, yeah. I think, why do you need to study old masters? Uh, first of all, fundamentals, right? Um, when, you, when you see me, for example, doing here the, uh, that painting, a lot of things come, you know, there's not just, you know, blindly painting and drawing. Uh, you need to know the fundamentals. There is perspective at play, composition at play, not just blind copying, right? I am drawing while thinking in 3D, basically. 
and at the same time I am able to immerse myself what that artist was going through like believe me try it yourself and you are able to see you will encounter things that you didn't see on the canvas the first time that is why especially for if you're a beginner uh, pick a topic uh, that you like and uh, just start painting right uh, the, fun yeah. the fundamentals here are you know uh, the key factor right um, thinking from different angles so um, when you're drawing some redrawing someone else's work and maybe Derek you can talk a little bit about it what do you go through like because when we make our own paintings we use our own fundamental knowledge so to speak but if you see yeah. someone else reinterpreting that and you study that um, tell me what for you the benefit is uh, in a in a brief way I suppose yeah, well, basically, you just you just want to, you know, translate through, you know, studying what you do, um, the process of like someone else and you trying to understand it. So you sort of like are able to imagine, you know, how this person achieved this desired effect or, you know, what not. And for instance, how to how to really lay down the layering of the colors or how to use uh, brush efficiency. Uh, in an efficient way, of course, uh, you know, how to mimic specific uh, gestures, uh, how to showcase the lighting, as you can see in this example of um, James painting, you can see that, you know, how he really sort of like sometimes exaggerate, like a bounce light, for instance, on the horse. Yes. But it, but it's, it's so, it's so, you know, evocative and so juicy that you can really, you can really tell it's a believable a very believable aspect of his paintings even though it might be a little bit uh, oversaturated I guess this is like the way that he sort of like expressed his emotions and you study that you know from the from the very beginning you just you just do it like from ground from ground base the study and and maybe some of those features will be reflecting through your paintings in the in the you know in the future because you are basically studying someone else's work and study someone else's methods and someone else's process. You you try to reinterpret how this person thinks, you know, when, when it comes to, you know, doing this painting. So I guess this is like a really good lesson when you just observe and analyze and at the same time putting things into practice, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a very good thing. Like the things that, that I was going through while painting it, you know, you just remember those things because while uh -huh. painting, while working on your skill, it's it's a normal human reaction. Like your brain does it. You 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 repeat a certain action, um, and you do it in a certain way because you're following the steps of someone else now, and that can be even more beneficial because normally, if you paint like from like your own knowledge and your own fundamental knowledge then you know you use only that one way however painting yeah. and, and you, you, art is, is a creative process and so if you're yeah. studying someone else there are many creative ways to yeah uh, you, you, to achieve you it. might you might not notice specific things that you know he noticed because imagine that you are standing there in like at the sunset and you know you do this scene maybe some of the stuff that he put, he put on his painting that you know you would never really notice you know and and those are the things that you you can benefit a lot while you study other other artists you know basically yeah yeah exactly it's um yeah to me it's uh it was always a beautiful thing and you know just the subject matter can be uh can be of so much variation right because uh it is not only like you know artists artists that we study but also designers uh like sid mead right um, you know, so we, we don't only like go through the, the studying of shapes, composition, color, fundamentals, but we also study, uh, you know, design language as well, right? Of course, that yeah. is then, of course, a much uh, difficult topic and something that we will definitely also make an episode uh, on. But it's, it's just um, it's such a powerful tool yeah. to look back how the old masters were doing it, right? I mean, yeah, and and and, and, and you know when we when we talk about like you know our process of like designing things, you you basically by studying like other you know like must old masters, you can you can basically study your 
technique in terms of like showcasing things. So basically like your illustrative skill can sort of like level up by, by doing those studies. And you know, when you have your ideas and when you do designs, you can basically you can basically borrow some of the things that you learned yes. from uh, from the studies and inject that into your own painting process, right? So we don't really need to worry about you know artistic process anymore. You can focus on the ideas, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like it, like painting and drawing should become like walking for a concept artist, right? Like that is a skill that is very hard to you know be good at, but once mastered. Uh, you will be able to communicate everything uh, in all in all kinds of ways, right? Like for example, in this uh, example, this really trains my brush efficiency, and this skill, for example, will not be useful for you know detailed line drawings, but this skill over here that you see will be very effective if a client will ask me to do you know fast mood um, uh, environment explorations, right? Because like I am, yeah. I am trying okay. to or or you know like a, you know like a, um, a color scripts. Yes. For instance, it's a really important aspect, I guess. Yeah. When you can just quickly lock down, you know, the composition just with like a very, you know, um, painterly strokes and you know suggestive colors, I guess. Exactly. And of course, learning versus working goes uh, goes a long way. We talk about it in class too. Um, people, you know, you might ask yourself, so, well, so, so does that mean that, you know, uh, this skill over here, you would draw and paint everything from scratch if you have to do like multiple paintings a day? No, of course not. You can photo bash, you can use 3D, everything for clients. And we teach that in the, in, in, in the environment class of uh, like your yeah. class, right? And I teach that as well in the hardware design class. But, yeah, these are things but, that are sort of like overlapping. Yeah. But we we are we are happy to have like a you know separate class when when we can just purely focus on this aspect. Exactly. So we don't we can we don't really need to worry about like you know design aspect here. Yeah. You know, we, it's just you know like a shape law and you know the composition sort of like goes with the study. Yeah. But you can purely focus on like design aspect in 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 our other classes. Yeah. So. You know, this is purely out of like, you know, learning the artistic skills and basically, you know, um, nailing down that look and, you know, understanding how other artists work. Because we study not only, you know, old master, we also study sometimes the current artists. We study like current, you know, current, current concept artists. Yes. And maybe not like super current, like more like a recent old master, so to speak, you know, but uh but we, yeah, we just do a lot of things, like you know, from from doing like um, shots from the movies, when we can study also like um, color frames and lighting just based on the on the movies. But I guess we will get there uh, in other episodes. But for here, we basically pick up, and um, every time, every term, we just pick up like one leading artist for like uh, for those studies. And yeah, this time it was um, this guy, you know. So yes, yeah, James Reynolds is amazing, and. What I wanted to get back to is, you know, um, the, that skill that we that we learn uh, and teach um, during the digital painting classes is, you know, that we do no photo bash, we do no 3D during those classes. But we do that on purpose because we want the students to embed it into their systems that if they have to, they will and they can with confidence make something from scratch, right? Like, of course. Uh, in a production pipeline, you would use other tools to speed up the process. But it is so important that you know you have the knowledge and you have the confidence that without uh, you know 3D help or you know photos, you will be able to achieve it as well, right? Because you understand light, you understand how to achieve something in an uh, in an effective way, and that gives you yeah. also a huge amount of freedom, right? Like let's say that you are that you are so much used to a process where you know. Um, uh, you you let Blender, for example, uh, pre-render for you a preset of an environment. Yeah, that's all cool and handy, but if that is your only process and you cannot even you know juggle around and uh, start maybe something from scratch, uh, both in 3D and to, in 2D at the same time, then that's where you start to feel the limitation, right? Same with Photo Bash. Like not all the shapes that you want to achieve as a concept designer can be found in photos. Sometimes you have to draw them out, model them out, paint them out, random them out, right? Because a concept artist in the end 
needs to be sometimes yeah. not only responsible for the small sh for the big shapes but to yeah. the to the smallest shapes sometimes even the way how something is scratched or textured oh. right mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I guess like uh, what you also what you also said, I think it's it's really important to elaborate on that is that you know that painterly skills are basically those fundamentals on lighting and values and you know shape and how we sort of like treat uh, you know things in more painterly way is very useful when you are able when you have to, for instance, um, you know overpaint the 3D. You know, uh, or overpaint some scenes that the client provides you with, and it's much faster, it's much easier when you when you have this artistic skill. So you are not limited by your lack of skills, basically, and you can purely focus on you know more technical stuff. If you have three D, for instance, base right, or if you want to help yourself with three D, you can purely you know over in, intersect like two D. Uh, technique with with it, with 3D, you know, and basically just mishmash them together, and I guess those studies will definitely let you understand, you know, the lighting and and values and you know and composition, and the way we basically paint or treat specific materials with suggestiveness, right? Yes. Yeah. Very well said. Uh, or suggestion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Exactly. No, it's uh yeah. These are all the the crucial points. Uh, you know. And uh, what what it leads to, you know, uh, it leads to uh, another point, which is uh, training your efficiency, right? So not only trains the fundamentals, being able to confidently start everything from scratch, being responsible for for every brush stroke, uh, scratch, uh, uh, color shift, uh, while being able to understand it, why it happens, but also the efficiency, how it is executed, right? And with every artist that you will study and research, you will notice that every one of them has their own creative way to put those brush strokes on canvas. Where are they keeping it simple? Where are they keeping it complex? Where are they mixing the colors heavily? Where are they keeping the color simple, right? Um, with James Reynolds, you can see that um, his brush strokes are actually very short, controlled, but done in a nice uh, chaotic way, so to speak. And the subject matter, like the horse and the, and the cowboy in the uh, foreground slash midground, has the most complexity. I feel like there he uses tiny, uh, thin brush strokes. Like you see the rim lights on the horse's uh, legs on the back. You see the, the, the light hitting the horse head there in the back, like the, the, the white horse. The, those are very nice controlled brush strokes. Now you look at the bushes in the background, he uses more eff uh, eff effective ways to um, suggest that background, right? And he keeps that loose on purpose, so you always lead your eye towards uh, towards the center. Um, Derek, do you have, because you are, uh, you know, actually very, very good at suggesting brush strokes, um, maybe tell the people that are watching what you find effective uh, and what what you what you learned actually uh, through doing these studies because you also uh, have done tons when it comes to brush efficiency <clears throat> so yeah basically when it comes to like you know you can look at the, this painting of of james and you can tell that there is like a lot of depth you know because he, he he used the background as like a very loosey, suggestive, you know, background, basically. And as long as his, or whatever painting you do, let's say that his paintings were mostly oriented with like uh, landscapes, but, you know, most importantly, I guess, he really wanted to put like a figures and, and horses as a main focal point. So he really put the effort to really sort of like, you know, sumptuously, uh, paint all the details on the horses and on the riders and the background and even like a foreground elements on the ground are really loosey because he he intentionally you know prioritize things on the painting right and as long as you are not required as long as you are not asked or as long as it's not required for you to design the whole land very sumptuously you can keep it like very loosey and focus on what's really the the main subject of the painting or the main you know the main element of the painting and his definitely main elements were were riders were horses and and the guys 
So he really put all the effort on the details in there while skipping the things you know, surrounding them very loosely. But th by that, he also builds a relation between the planes and sort of like push back, you know, the landscape to give us like a good sense of depth and like a open space area, basically. Yes. Yeah. Very good point when you said uh, he's creating relationships, right, between uh, between the, the points. So you have... Uh, yeah, you... it's prioritizing, basically. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's the same when you put your Mac, for instance, into the scene. And you don't really need to or you don't really want to design the landscape or environment or architecture. You can keep everything surrounding the Mac very loosely and only focus on the, you know, the main topic, the main subject, which in your uh, pieces, uh, for instance, are Macs. Yes. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I can tell you that this exercise, like when I was doing uh, this study, I was already thinking like, hmm, perhaps I'll be able to use that, this kind of painterly skill uh, to use that as a scene of one of my vehicles, right? Because like, imagine like, you know, a floating kind of Star Wars vehicle uh, being put in this uh, landscape, you know, like on some kind of desert planet with that sunset going on and painted in this... Uh, in this way you know like that's what we also meant that you can directly use that skill that you learn while painting studies from old masters and directly uh, like Derek said like fuse uh, f um, influence you know with that skill into your into your concept art so uh, yeah it's a it's a beautiful thing really we can I think we can like talk yeah. about it for hours and hours um, yeah but it's but... it's really important because like you know we we touch upon like the basics of like you know fundamentals mm -hmm. like lighting the, mm -hmm. the material definition but now you also understand that you can suggest the depth by losing things up you know yes. and you have to know when to lose because so many people sometimes like you know they, they ask me like oh how to you know how do you keep the <laughs> you know paintings or concepts so consistent within the depth range and how you build basically the depth that you can really feel you can immerse yourself even on a very highly detailed concepts it's basically your your on your knowledge on how to build relation between the values and at the same time even when you put a lot of details you know sometimes where where to loosen loosen up things, you know, and this is the ex exact thing that we can notice in in James paintings when he really prioritize and intentionally or deliberately pick up the, the the areas to make them really you know detailed, and what he really treats very loosely because he knows that he can basically let him do that, right? Yes. No, that's. Uh... Yeah, all good points shared. Um, while listening to you, I'm also kind of like re-watching what is happening on the screen. I can see that uh, I had I was struggling with the horse, man. Fuck. Look at that. It look, ain't easy. <laughs> look at that chest. So again, guys, uh, not only lighting, composition, brush efficiency, but based depending on the subject matter, you will learn tons and tons of things. Here, I learned more about the anatomy of horses. And of course, I needed to... Uh, uh, consult Derek on it. Uh, you actually gave me a nice feedback on it. So yeah, you can even say that even when we do these online demos, uh, not online, but in-class demos, I mean, um, to, we kind of risk because um, this was not like my uh, my comfort zone, but is uh, we do want to show to the students that based on what I know and based on how we can always employ the fundamental skills and the and all the knowledge that we share throughout the week i can just pick a random topic and based on that we can just uh based on what we know uh we we are able to put anything on the canvas because in the end it everything is about, is made out of shapes uh, perspectives applies everywhere lighting applies everywhere if you know how lighting works uh, and you know how materials react to lighting you know uh, what's happening to a reflective material what's happening to a rough material what's happening to you know uh, you know a more diffuse kind of material transparency etc you know um, these are all the things that are core knowledge so to speak and with that core knowledge you will be able to uh, tackle you know almost any topic of course there is you know sub knowledge that is needed while doing this i needed to for example know more about uh you know the muscle structure of a horse right so um 
so yeah and uh, going back to you know the the efficiency of the brushes uh, like Derek said uh, just to sum it up briefly this I think this painting is uh, uh, sliced in in three uh, in, in three sectors so to speak and I think it's very important to uh, identify that every time you do your painting on your own every time you you do a study so in the foreground you see massive big shapes that are simple um, and and darker as well you know you see these uh, green cyanic uh, fat brush strokes in the middle you have the most complexity a lot of detail on the horse the cowboys or ropes there's gear hanging um, cloth is folding uh, ropes are hanging, uh, little snippets of lights are being catched, are, are being caught by, you know, the, the lighting on the metal, uh, on the metal uh, pieces on the, on the horse's head. Uh, even the eye of the horse is catching, you know, some specular lighting. Uh, so that, that all has a lot of complexity. And then you go in the back and it's like what Derek said, it's very, it's very vague, right? Like, you know what it is, but like the rocks are not really defined with hard, uh, nice edges. The bushes, you know, we all know that those bushes have branches, leaves, but he's not painting that. It's just, it's it's just a volume of green that reacts to the lighting, and and he suggests the shape uh, of that nicely. So, uh, yeah. Anything to add, Derek? Shall we move on? Uh, yeah, we can move on to the next one. I guess it's uh, you know, it's uh. It's something that we, we basically train through those studies and we, we sort of like mentioned it already, but I guess we can we can elaborate on that because um, we reinterpret the reality by studying, you know, uh, the paintings or study other artists. But now you also reinterpret the reality by the re reinterpretation of original author, basically. Yes. So you basically study his reinterpretation of reality and maybe I guess what's really important, what I also noticed before, it it's cool to basically notice and sort of analyze someone else's approaches, because maybe when you will be doing your own study from real life, you will be able to inject some of that knowledge from his interpretation of world into your own process, basically, right? Yes. Yeah. Very well said. You're basically uh, when it comes to because. That is a very nice point, you know, uh, the reinterpretation of reality. Because when you do art, anything uh, art related, um, I think good artists are able to, you know, always showcase the reality in their own way. And what you see, you know, sometimes you see, oh, what is your style, you know? Is it stylistic? Is it uh, realistic? Um, for me personally, there is no realistic style. Like, well, except if you do, I don't know, do, even when you do photography it's not realistic it's just the reinterpretation of that artist how he picks that composition how he yeah. picks that lighting etc and even more so with art because you are able to uh, even if you paint realistically here like I you know we would all assume by default that James Reynolds is a realistic artist yes he doesn't do you know abstract stuff uh, he, he really paints what was there back uh, back in the 1800s uh, in the in the wild west so to speak right and the, he he's just it's nothing is realistic that he paints it's just his way of you know reinterpreting uh, reality and uh, it's just so beautiful that what you said is like you are now really trying to think be in his shoes immerse yourself and reinterpret that in uh, in his way then you go on study another artist and then you will see that even if even if you for example do a cliff uh, background of James Reynolds he does it differently than for example um, on another artist and then you will start to notice which artist uh, was focusing on what and how they were reinterpreting the reality it's like reading a book right when you're reading a book you have your own reinterpretation of uh, of the reality and what is taking place uh, in that story of the book. Everyone, you know, that's why books are so good, right? They say, because everyone like uh, gets immersed uh, and everyone sees kind of a, a, a different picture. And the same is uh, within art, right? If, for example, uh, me and Derek are both concept artists, but I bet you, and we, we did this multiple times, um, if I would be asked to draw and paint a landscape with a castle on it, 
the same weather conditions, let's say from the same photo, mine would look way different than Darek's because he is reinterpreting the reality in a different way. Perhaps Darek would focus more on composition, the shapes, the mood, the weather. He would uh, probably, you know, focus more, you know, on the clouds. He would maybe reinforce the depth with some mist in the background, you know. And I would probably just, <laughs> just spend hours on making every stone visible on the castle and just focus on the details in the windows and uh, uh, putting some props around the castle, right? Like, the, the, and that is uh, that is beautiful. And being able, being aware of that, and studying other artists. Um, makes you even more aware of uh, what you need to what you need to achieve because everyone will focus on something else uh, in the beginning and it is very important to identify what you need to focus more on depending on what needs to be delivered for uh, the client in the end so yeah yeah very well said and of course we have to we have to emphasize on like the client's needs right so we have to be flexible when when the client wants you to 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 sort of like showcase or design every every single aspect of the of the world or every single aspect of the of the vehicle you have to be flexible to be able to do that even though your style might be a little bit more sketchy or your style might be a little bit more 3d alike or photographic you have to basically be able to to work around with uh with the with the project needs or clients needs right yes yeah exactly it's um i mean we all do it because we love uh love what we do but yeah we we run the school towards so that people also get a job as fast as they can so yeah um now the other thing is you know you probably if you never done studies and um I also took them for granted for a long time. Actually, we started doing them when we, we with all honesty, we started doing them way more since we opened the school, right? And then uh, I think, Derek, you can say that too, that you also started to like draw more with lines uh, um, while doing those studies. And, you know, we, we just uh, we, we just improved only on that as well, I guess. And uh, Yeah, uh, of course, like it's it's basically called inspiration, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh... uh yeah we we just sort of like inter like intersect with like you know our our buff like different approaches and and yeah like just getting back to what was done before because i was mostly drawing back in the days but then for a good couple years i i just abandoned that and and through the school i i came back you know to to drawing again so so I guess it's um, and you start like painting and doing more environment work as well. So yeah. I think it's it's all you know part of like uh, inspiration, motivation, and at the same time, I can feel like it's a good, maybe not competition, but it's the way that you you just challenge yourself all the time, you know. So definitely, like every time I uh, I you know walk into the class and I see uh, the, the people, the students want to want to learn. They're eager. Most of them are really eager. I'm really thankful for that. It really motivates me in return. Like the vibe that uh, we have in uh, in class is. Uh, yeah, I, I miss it really so much. Really, that that COVID shit that happened, really destroyed all the plans. But you know, I cannot complain. Other people are really going through uh, harsher times right now, uh, especially. Yeah, we cannot we cannot really moan. Yeah. I guess it's going right. back to normal anyway. So so yeah, it's better to just wait and and be ready for like proper term than just you know start something in between, just cut it off. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean that, that is the main reason why also why we didn't want to do it online, right? Just just by the method that we teach and and like just the feeling of being there physically with the people is just something that. Uh, is very uh, focal pointy, I guess. You know, it's a, it's a it's a main focal point aspect to uh, yeah, to keep, totally. to keep you know, things physical. Yeah. Yeah. So. If if the school is physical, let it be physical. If you want to do some online class, it's fine. But it's totally different thing. So yes. I guess like um, it's really important and really useful to try both ways for the students. It's the same when you just work as a freelancer. It's good to try at least once in your life. To work in a house, you know, basically, because you just want to get that essence of, you get want to get that sense of like working with people, being surrounded by people, knowing knowing how basically, knowing what's the behind the scenes of the production, mm -hmm. and yeah, it it teaches you a lot of things like you know like um, communication skills and you know knowing and understanding the process behind 
behind the projects and then your knowledge is, is already set there so you can decide if you want to stay at home and doing stuff freelance and it's the same with like the students a lot of people are basically traveling from school to school to get a different um, uh, experience from different different schools and a lot of those people also did online classes you know but they always tell that oh this this is totally a different experience and this is something that you cannot really compare when it comes to you know when it, when it comes to comparing like uh, online versus off you know on site mm-hmm. yeah definitely and uh, i think you know we uh, we took a big hit a uh, hit a big blast but uh, yeah we definitely rather um, waited out and then we you know come back like never before like Derek said we we uh, we moved the term uh, seats are almost filled of course so we, we are merging basically the, the the spring and fall term but rest assured it's not that you know our classes will be twice as big no like luckily we did not fill out all the seats when uh, spring term was starting there are a couple of seats left and those are the ones that are now being uh, filled out and yeah we really can't wait to uh, launch it on the 16th of October let's hope everything will be back to normal and uh, yeah just to um, just to finish this one off there is one more topic that I would like to discuss here with you Derek because we talked about you know why to do uh, studies you know so it's about the fundamentals it reinforces you know uh, think about the fundamentals right perspective color composition etc etc depth also how you how you uh, mentioned then uh, thinking from different angles because you are you are um, uh, doing a study from someone else it forces you to think outside of the box it forces you to think how you normally would not think because you're basically stepping in someone else's brain um, training efficiency every artist has their own way of efficiency studying them makes you a more powerful concept artist training uh, the reinterpretation of reality i think we talked that in, a, in an advanced way as well so we don't have to repeat that um, and now the last thing is uh, subject matter versus what you are interested in, right? So when you are starting uh, doing studies, of course, it is advised to um, pick first something that you are interested in. However, start with simple things, right? Let's say that you are interested in uh, m- mid, uh, Middle Eastern uh, architecture, right? Um, don't start right away with that. Start, you know, painting, for example, a simple apple on your desk, right? Start then, you know, drawing some simple landscapes, some rocks, and then move on to, you know, introduce uh, architecture. Um, then, of course, there is a subject matter that you never touched, like uh, I did here with the horses. Um, why should you do it? Why should you not do it? You should not do it when you are not ready for it and you don't know everything about the fundamentals and you don't know yet how lighting works. However, you should do it once in a while to kind of force yourself to test yourself out if your knowledge, of all the fundamentals and everything you learned can be applied to something that you've never done before. Uh, Derek, can you, do you think you, you can add something to this? No, I guess it's a, it's like a good structure, you know, basically answer to that, you know, like when, when you can put all those, you know, points, like it's, it's like attachment points when you just basically grasp all the knowledge and, and basically build upon by doing one study only. And look how many things you touch upon by doing this study and how many more things you can do by doing multiple studies, right? So it shows that multiple studies is always good to do because people are basically you know skipping them or abandoning them right and i think even like it doesn't really need to be like a million studies or like a hundred studies a week it's more about efficient study right and this is one of the points that we also mentioned efficient study how to do for instance one study and get the most out of it. yes yeah very good one yeah um if you can put into a study design lighting composition and you see all these factors there being played in then sometimes yes challenge yourself like that it is sometimes more worth than to do 100 simple repetitive um, landscape studies which in their own respect have their own benefit because you train the muscle memory you train your neurons in your brain to communicate better with each other and then you'll be able to uh, just bash out and, and, and spam out very fast compositions so yeah everything has their uh, 
has its own advantage, disadvantage. We cover all that uh, in, in high detail in, uh, in class, of course. So, um, yeah, I think, um, I think we are pretty good with timing since we wanted to have it, you know, 40 minutes. Um, I hope that you guys also are enjoying the pre-recorded sessions without the guests. Um, something this is like basically the the original format that uh, uh, that that we introduced. You know, quick art talks. You know, it was supposed to be quick art talks, not longer than forty minutes, uh, covering fast subjects. Then uh, Derek had an amazing idea of, of course, you know, introducing uh, guests. And I think next time we'll have uh, again a special guest, right? Yeah, not spoiling the name not yet, spoiling but yeah, there, yet. There, there, yeah, there will be there will be a, a next guest, and yeah, I guess it's it's really good to do like uh, both things, you know, like uh, the primary thing that was like just basically pre-recorded session, plus like having some live sessions that we can get like more interaction with people. So it's going to be soon. It's going to be next week. This week we are doing this this talk and we're wrapping it up, and yeah, as well. You know, like a lot of things are going on and a lot of things are coming uh, to to our channels. So please stay tuned and of course, please uh, subscribe and, and share that that knowledge on on that um, to your art friends. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, sharing is caring. So if you guys enjoyed it, please share, like, subscribe, comment, all the 21st century shit that you should do if you like a channel, I guess. Um, other than that, um, yeah, really, thanks for uh, listening to the end. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.